Hello, welcome to Leadership in Action, a series of short, timely, and relevant interviews with law firm leaders on issues important to running a successful mid-sized law firm. These podcasts are part of the Managing Partner Series presented by Thomson Reuters in affiliation with the Managing Partner Forum and are hosted by John Remsen, Jr., CEO of the Managing Partner Forum and President of the Remsen Group. Our guest this month is Brad Robbins. Chief Operating Officer of Williams Parker, based in Sarasota, Florida, with approximately 40 attorneys. Brad has over 10 years of leadership in law firms and earned his MBA from the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. Welcome, Brad and John. Uh, thank you, Colleen, and thank you, Brad, for being here. We appreciate your time uh, to chat a little bit about uh, an important topic here with managing partners, and uh, that is uh, practical advice from a COO on uh, uh, how to uh, better lead and manage the firm, and uh, so we appreciate your willingness to share your guidance uh, to managing partners this morning. So before we get started, could you tell us a little bit about your firm, Williams Parker, and some of its strategic priorities on which you're working uh, in in the near term and and perhaps even into the longer term? Sure, John. Thanks. Uh, It's... uh it's a pleasure to be invited to, to chat with you. You have many fans in our firm. Um, we have uh, been operating uh, as, a, as a firm here in Sarasota since 1925, so we are celebrating our 90th anniversary of this year. Um, we would uh, typically describe ourselves as a full-service firm, although it's uh, a civil-oriented firm. And tell us, uh, how long have you been with the firm, Brad? Uh, coming up on six years in uh, the fall. I'm curious as to how you fit into your firm's governance um, and how you fit into its leadership team. We have a uh, a three-person management committee, which is comprised of uh, attorneys um, in the firm who take on the additional responsibility of uh, serving um, in, in that role. Uh, and they are uh, responsible for the uh, hiring management of, uh, of me and, uh, and, and then indirectly the rest of the, um, the staff, which supports the operation. They in turn and work very. And do you serve on that management committee, Brent? Um, I am. Uh, I attend and support all of the management committee functions, and all the meetings, all the activities, email, etc. So. Um, Technically, I wouldn't be a member of the management committee, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I work effectively as chief of staff supporting the management committee. Well, what do you believe to be, Brad, your most effective um, contributions in supporting your management committee and your leadership team? From my perspective, it's um, helping figure out um, how to – uh, sequence the decisions we face in a, in a, a optimal way, and then designing and helping to implement the the decisions that are made. And so the uh, the challenge is to cause folks who are um, really smart and really busy to come together to agree that the thing we're going to focus on, um, you know, is this particular challenge or this particular initiative in the face of having many challenges and opportunities uh, before us. And so helping to guide the conversation and the attention to the, uh, to the, to the next thing, uh, mm-hmm. and then coming to grips with the decisions made about that issue or challenge and helping to uh, guide the implementation um, so that folks that are making these decisions and that are ultimately responsible for those decisions aren't mucking around in the details, um, but that the end result is really close to what they had in mind to get started. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That's kind of the magic sauce. Uh, well, you wanted to talk, I know, a little bit about uh, your role as COO in uh, development, and they, I'm sorry, in uh, improving strategic hiring and purchasing decisions. And um, how do you think law firms can best improve those uh, decisions that it has to make on a, on a regular basis? Yeah, you know, it's, um, 
it's one of the areas that the general corporate world has um, figured out much more effectively than than law firms generally, and certainly mid-sized law firms. And that's how to reduce the risk associated with high-stakes decisions, including uh, and starting with um, hiring people, um, which uh, you know, in, in the labor-intensive, talent-intensive world we live, uh, you know, there's really nothing that's more critical on an ongoing basis than um, finding and hiring and retaining the, the right the right people. Um, and so, we, and I'm assuming, Brad, you're talking both lawyers and support staff. I, I, um, yes, that's that's uh, absolutely right. And the and the approach we've developed, we apply conceptually. We apply it to everybody we hire or mm-hmm. consider hiring. Uh, we also apply it to other high stakes decisions, the uh, a purchase decision like uh, you know, deciding on a website developer to to build a new website. Or um, uh, hiring a, uh, uh, a a strategy uh, a strategic consulting firm or a creative consulting firm when we are you know deciding on who to, to engage in a professional services um, project. So uh, we apply the concept in all those cases. We of course have to um, particularize the specific approach based on the circumstances. But um, with respect to attorneys. For example, we also discriminate, if you will, between how we would approach laterals who we might be recruiting versus how we might approach brand new, say, summer associates who we are considering uh, extending offers to. But in in all of those cases, what we've done is thought pretty carefully and construct, with respect to each of those situations, uh, some uh, some assignments or tests that are intended to give the uh, the candidate the opportunity to demonstrate to us that they've got the skills uh, that that we're looking for. So aside from what a resume looks like, aside from what experience somebody's had, aside from the, the background check and the due diligence associated with their references, we make a concerted effort to create um, opportunities for um, laterals, for example, to uh, to demonstrate what we're looking for from a lateral in that uh, for a particular position. We might ask them to present to uh, to us a uh, uh, a short um, a persuasive piece in terms of the, you know, trying to convince us as, as, a court, as if we were a, um, a judge or jury. Uh, That's a great idea. Good point. We, That's we, a great idea. And who, who would the lateral present to? The entire firm? Just the leadership team? We, it, it would. Uh, it, we will. We, we look to have a diversity of folks in the audience. We we want to make sure we have subject matter experts who know what this guy is talking about, uh, so we can offer some substantive um, input uh, about the the quality of this particular analysis or argument. Uh, we like to have people who know nothing about the subject area and therefore are you know uh, uh, coming at it from a slightly different perspective. We want to have people that have been involved in already interviewing this person so that they have some more insight and can sort of connect some dots between what they've heard about the person, what they've seen in interviews or read about, and then what's happening in front of them. Um, so we, we like to have a, you know, a diverse crew to review the person. We also like to make sure everybody who's uh, participating in that process, uh, say witnessing or uh, in the audience, is also using a common um, tool uh, to record their their reaction. So we're mm-hmm. you know, looking for if we're looking for somebody who's going to be very uh, or, uh, you know, business development is one of the key roles. We want to make sure that we're asking all the folks in the audience to you know uh, if you're a potential client, what do you think of this guy? Is, mm-hmm. is she is she offering a compelling uh, proposition? Boy, that's a great great idea and and so easy to put in place. And you know the statistics are are alarming as to the numbers of laterals don't work out in the long term. I was reading an article recently, 70%. And, you know, the smaller the firm, the more important each piece is, each lawyer is. And so making sure you're making wise decisions, and this is just a great practical way to help reduce the risk, as you say. Now, when it comes to purchasing services, you mentioned the website developer, for example. Right. You know, what 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 might be your recommendation to law firms, smaller and mid-sized, be more... Yeah. Uh, strategic.
strategic and lower the risk on those. So there's lots and lots of uh, vendors out there. So in, aside, so in addition to the standard checking references and, you know, looking, uh, you know, asking other people about their experiences, which we, we, we did, um, we set up a, effectively a beauty contest, and we created mm -hmm. a small project, which, was, which we, we agreed with these vendors to compensate them for. Um, it was a modest amount, it, and, but it was a small project that was intended to give them an opportunity to demonstrate what they could do. We were looking to test a little bit of their creativity. We assumed all of them could code, um, but we, you know, gave them a small assignment and said, "We need, you know, we'd like for you to produce something that we can view," uh, and gave them a deadline and uh, and a, a fixed price, um, and ran three simultaneous tests. Um, and w what we learned from that, uh, you know, we got, you know, one guy dropped out pretty quickly because they couldn't, uh, they couldn't reach an interim milestone. <laughs> well, uh, that was back to something. <laughs> <laughs> we had two guys that made it to the end and, um, and we could see a dramatic difference, between, not just between the two in, in terms of, um, the work product, uh, but these shops, you know, it was very different in terms of the experience in the interim, in terms of the, the back and forth, the give and the take in terms of questions and answers and the, the speed with which they responded or um, reacted to um, uh, to us. You know, so we, we got a, you know, kind of a full-blown view on a small scale mm -hmm. what the relationship nice test run of what it would like to work with these, these folks. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's another great idea and so simple to put in place. Brad, I'm assuming this is where you plug in as their COO. You're developing the timeline. You're developing the process, the RFP, uh, and overseeing a lot of that uh, to minimize, you know, the, the amount of time the lawyers have to invest in the process. Yeah, we, we're pretty um, we, we you know, pretty serious disciples of you know, basic project management tools. Um, and uh, and so try to leverage technology to the extent we can to create uh, some um, you know clarity around assignments and who has the tasks and when they're due and how, what the dependencies are and we try to we enroll lawyers as part of those processes but less from a management side of the process and then if we're putting together a, say a publication or depending mm -hmm. on authors to produce articles. Uh, mm -hmm. They plug into the process, and, and mm -hmm. they are, you know they have an ex we have an expectation that it'll be done when you know, when the deadline um, comes. So we we work to use as many general management tools to allow the lawyers to do just what they need to do, uh, and and leave the management side and organization side and implementation side um, to, uh, to others who can't mm -hmm. do what the lawyers can do. Well, you know, and moving projects along, implementing uh, initiatives, I, I so often find lawyers, law firms, well-intended uh, as they go about their planning and all the things they're going to do, and uh, not so good on the implementation side. And it takes focus, it takes attention, resources, accountability, deadlines, all the things you're bringing to the table. Lastly, as we wind up our conversation, Brad, um, I was hoping you might be willing, from, from the managing partner's perspective, what advice would you offer uh, a managing partner, mid-sized law firm, that's really looking to focus on the business side of running the firm and uh, hiring, developing a good working relationship with somebody like you, a firm administrator? Firm um, executive. Having no, no lower standards, than the standards you have when you hire, um, if you're hiring a, an attorney, a lateral attorney, mm -hmm. to to be a meaningful, central, contributing shareholder in in your firm, that you should have the same high standards, the same high expectations for for your staff, all up and down the staff chain. Mm -hmm. um, Starting with the, the COO or whatever the most senior person is on the staff side, um, uh, I think lowering expectations is uh, a, a pretty quick route to, to, to getting a lower results. <laughs> so I, I say start with high standards and expectations and then treat that person like you are going to treat that new lateral shareholder. Mm -hmm. You've got to 
compensate them similarly, you need to uh, uh, treat them in terms of the uh, the resources around a shareholder, whether it's a parking or office, all those other indicators of, of that status, sort of shareholder status, et cetera, or the COO. That, 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 um, that's right. And in terms, I was going to ask you about compensation and for a firm that's really serious about investing in a chief operating officer and, and the position you described, the compensation range, is it sort of the mid-range of, of the equity partners or maybe perhaps the high range uh, of, of what the firm compensates its uh, highest paid equity partners. Where do you see the right sort of compensation fitting in to um, to, to, to satisfy the COO and um, give them that seat at the table? My read um, from my personal experience in other firms and is – and, and, and what I've gathered over the last several years here, um, that you should have uh, an expectation of somebody who's compensation, who's going to deliver a kind of a value proposition that would put them pretty much in the you know the, the range of the median of what you're compensating your shareholders at. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's going to be a gajillion exceptions to that. But, but, you know, if you're benchmarking, that, you know, it seems to me that would be a healthy uh, attitude to, to bring to that, uh, that conversation. You know, I agree with you at our conferences and such and, and the resources we're trying to build for managing partners, uh, running the firm more like a business, uh, less like that collection of sole practitioners sharing office space and valuing, valuing the management role, the leadership role, and, you know, it's non-billable what you bring to the table. And I think law firms, lawyers are so driven on the billable hour and the revenue you bring in off your back, your collections numbers, and have a hard time finding value among, um, you know, support staff. Uh, but really, really important. And, and a lot of the initiatives you describe, I would think you could very easily attribute it your uh, impact on the bottom line. And it's significant uh, by reducing attrition, by reducing mistakes, by uh, taking uh, tasks and projects off the plates of lawyers so they can do what they do best, practice law, and leave the administration management of the firm to folks who do what they do best in terms of IT, HR, finance, the rest of it. So um, uh, it, it's good, and I, I think it sounds like you're doing great things at your firm. They value and appreciate what you bring to the table. and. We appreciate your willingness to share uh, from the COO's perspective uh, some good practical advice that uh, other mid-sized firms can readily put into play. Yeah. So, Brad Robbins, we thank you very much for your time and your participation in our Leadership Action uh, podcast series. And, Colleen, I'll uh, take it back to you to wrap us up. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Managing Partner Series, Leadership in Action. For more information and resources, visit LegalSolutions.com backslash managing partners.